we, here we go now, we're just going to cross over the Lionsgate Bridge here, across the harbour. This is, you know, it's, it's not something, something like the Golden Gate Bridge, but not really. There's a, a view back towards um, Vancouver. So this is the Lionsgate Bridge. You can walk across this bridge, I think. Maybe not, not too sure. Maybe you can. Well. Cool, so here I am now at the Capilano Suspension Bridge. So um, stay tuned people, stay tuned and have a look at this place. Suspension Bridge and the walkway is above the tree, the, the, the tree line, right? So stay tuned my friends, stay tuned. Right, so it's $65 for an adult. But it's like America, you know, when you get up, up to the shop or counter and then just attack. $69 dollars and something with tax you know and um, so so anyway here I go Got the totem poles here. Oh, it's just lovely here. It's it's um it's nice and warm, but you're in among the trees here, and um, I, I I can't explain I can't explain the the atmosphere or the feeling. It's just lovely, so relaxing. I have to say. Look at these po totem poles here. Look, they're fantastic. So here we are my friends at the Capilano suspension bridge and um, so let's go. <laughs> it's just mad the way it's shaking but uh, it's all part of the adventure my friends. I don't know I think it's 200 and something feet of a drop to the down to the river below here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Super cool. Why is it more now? So I'm just going to get um, a Capala Capilano original uh, ice cream with uh, honey with mini cookies for $9.95 but that's not including tax I guarantee you that for nothing and I'm going to get a set bottle of 7-Up because I'm trusty Hi, could I have a 7-Up and could I have the Capilano original with honey mini cookies? Yeah Okay $16.89 Okay Right, I'm going to try this lovely Capilano honey and cookie ice cream. Look, oh my god, this looks nice. Oh, it's just lovely here in the shade. Let me try this now. Daddy's right next to me. It's cold. 
Ah, oh, scrumptious, scrumptious. I'm going to eat the cookie first, get it out of the way, and then, because I just love the ice cream, you see. Oh, oh my god. This is a life, my friends, this is a life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, I must put it on top. Cheers, my friends. Just what the doctor ordered. Excuse me. Isn't this just great? Spend it above the the tree, tree the canopy above the, the tree tops over there. Look, just goes round. Oh, that's fantastic. So it's saying that most of the trees in this forest are coniferous, meaning they have needles instead of leaves. Uh, a mature Douglas fir tree can have up to 65 million needles. Coniferous tree, trees keep their needles all year because they do not need to spend much energy feeding their needles in the winter. Deciduous trees must drop their leaves in the fall and grow new ones in the spring because it uses too much energy to feed the leaves in freezing temperatures. I didn't know that now, my friends. You learn something new every day. <laughs> so what else are we doing in your spare time, only walk on a treetop canopy in, <laughs> in the forest in North Vancouver, my friends? Look at this, a hoot, treetop canopy. Our forest is home to the barred owl, named after the bars of brown and white on its chest. It is sometimes called the laughing owl, and uh, its call sound or hoot mimics someone saying, who cooks for you all? Who cooks for you all? It is also one of the few owls with brown eyes, since most owls have yellow eyes. The barred owl is quite shy and only comes out during the day if the park is quiet. Amazing. Amazing information. Right. This is fantastic here. Right? It's saying that some of the trees here are 1,500 years old. Amazing. We'll just say some, some trees in our forest are more than 1,500 years old. Every year a tree develops two rings of growth, a dark one for summer growth and a light one for winter growth. The outer layer of bark on a tree is strong and thick so that it can resist forest fires and bug inf infestation. The inner bark is the pipeline for nutrients travelling to the rest of the tree. The sap bud is the newest wood in the tree and it transports water to the needles. The heartwood is the oldest and densest part of the tree. It is keeping the tree upright. So, the heartwood. So in here, that's the densest part of the tree. The bark, the sapwood and the inner bark. Wow.
Amazing trees, amazing trees. Look at this one. I'd say this one here is definitely over a thousand years old. Look at this. Look at the sun dappling through the trees. Fantastic. Fantastic, my friends. Fantastic. Look at the root of this tree here. I want, maybe it's not. Look, see, it's coming on and it's going on underneath the, the stairs there. Unless it's, what would you call them, like a. You know, it's off a main tree. Look at this tree that's after falling down. So this is fantastic. Look what he's done here. Brilliant. Wow. That's fantastic. I like that. The middle tree here is a red cedar, um, which is this one here. And look, that's 16 years the height of it as far as that height there. And look how high that tree is. Wow. And this one is a Douglas fir. Wow. Right. So saying here to measure yourself to see right this so mine is 13 years right so it would take 13 13 years for that red cedar to get to just this height here my height 13 years and look at the height of it so it's a couple of hundred years old maybe for, for sure I reckon look at the root roots of this little tree here look really exposed aren't they Trying to walk its way up to get to catch the light and become a proper tree. Oh, look at that. Look at, the, look at the light coming through there, through the leaves of that tree. It's not absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. Magnificent, my friends, magnificent. So they're saying there's a plant here called, they call it skunk cabbage, okay? And I reckon that's it just down there. You see, just down there. And it's saying the reason why it's called a skunk cabbage is a plant. It's found in the wet rainforests of the Pacific Northwest. This plant got its name for one very good reason. It has a stinky, stinky smell. The odor attracts flies, beetles, and gnats which pollinate the plant. Bears eat the roots to clean out their system after hibernating. But don't you try it. It will burn your throat and stomach. There you go. That's it there, look. But I think that's it, just, just down below there. Never heard of it before in my life. Skunk cabbage. Amazing, amazing. So it's saying here, Capolano's biggest visitor, it's saying that uh, in November of 2006, uh, Vancouver experienced a particularly cold winter with more severe weather than its mild climate had seen in decades. Um, Vancouver's average November rainfall levels is 6 inches, however 14 inches fell in November of 2006. In the middle of the night on November the 26th, 7 inches of heavy wet snow uh, driven by 80 kilometer winds fell on the already drenched forest 
by 3.22 a.m. this large Douglas 4 um, where am I? fell and landed on the bridge. Engineers estimated that the tree struck with the force and velocity of a fully loaded gravel truck at highway speeds of 60 miles an hour. Despite all that, the bridge's cables remained undamaged and the bridge stayed in place. The tree snapped on impact. The top toad came to rest in the canyon below. The remainder, weighing about 17 tonnes, laid on the bridge. So, um, although the cables with their uh, 123 tonne braking strength, enough to lift two loaded 747s, were undamaged, the tree needed to be removed. Small slices of the tree were cut out while a system of tree supporter cables and pulleys worked to carefully lift and swing the remaining tree from its perch. There you go. That's part of it there, that's it there. I hate that when people see you standing and you know you're doing something interesting they come and you have to stop and see why what are you doing it's like you ever hear that thing if, if if one person stands looking over a bridge anybody passing by they'll come and they'll start looking over the bridge you know what i mean um anyway so it's um mighty secure my friend it's mighty secure i go down here and see what's down here quick look down here this way might get a view. Here's a bit of cool information here about the trees and the rainforest. It says breed, it's it's caption here is breed in, right? So it's saying rainforests are sometimes uh, referred to as the earth's lungs, which is obviously true, and they are responsible for 28% of the world's oxygen turnover. Uh, trees remove carbon dioxide, which everybody knows, from the air and gives off oxygen, which then breeds. Just one of just one of these giant trees, one of them, um, releases enough oxygen to support a family of four. So I presume that would be for their entire lifetime, maybe. So there you go. Isn't that, isn't that amazing, isn't it? Remember the writer, uh, what's his name, Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, anyway, here's a, here's a, a quote from our about trees, the most of forests. He goes, uh, it, it is not so much for its beauty that the forest makes a claim upon men's hearts, as for that subtle something, that quality of air, that uh, emanation from old trees that so wonderfully changes and renews a weary spirit. Um, that's a, a lovely way of putting it into words, isn't it? I did not know this now, look, nature's na natural muse. The forest has long served as inspiration for poets, musicians, painters and creative thinkers. Some of the world's most famous artistic pieces have been composed with the landscape of the forest in mind. Look around and see what inspires you. The whole bloody forest inspires me, that's for sure. Um, it's just fantastic. Fantastic. Look at that. The sunlight beaming through the trees, dappling through the trees, shall I say. And that award. Fantastic. We're just sitting down here, lovely, a lovely chair beside this shop here. And look, Grizzly Bear beside me, Mr. Grizzly. So uh, let's have a chat with Mr. Grizzly here. <coughs> How are you, Mr. Grizzly? How's it going? I'm from I'm from Ireland. If I go out in, in, into the forest, would you would you come after me? Would you eat me? You better not, because I'll tell you why. Because I got loads of class stories I could tell you from loads of different places. And if you eat me, like what? You know what I mean? Because I I look after you now. I wouldn't let anybody anybody shoot you now. So don't come after me if I'm out in the woods, right? Okay, good man.
I think there's over a 200 foot drop here. I think that's what it is. Wow. Wow. Super cool, super cool. Look down there. See what I mean? Wow. So I, I like this is fantastic. Like, see, look at this here now. Look at look at like someone had to design this bridge, or some or, or a group of people, engineers or something, right? And um, if it was left to me, <sighs> we'd still be probably in the Stone Age, my friends. Seriously, I couldn't invent anything. Oh, this is fantastic! 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 It's becoming my favourite word here in Vancouver. Fantastic, amazing, or as Americans would say, awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Wow, this is just so cool. So delighted I'm doing this now. This is deadly. Wow, look at this. Fantastic. Fantastic. Woohoo! Oh wow. There's a waterfall. Don't know if you can see with the GoPro, just straight over there. Coming down off the mountain, straight through the trees and straight into that river just down there. Amazing. Right, so this information sign here is amazing. It's tell telling you that the river down below below us here, down here, right, this river, that um, there are more than two million salmon released in, into this river every single year, right? And <clears throat> with thousands of them returning to spawn uh, after spending a few years in the ocean, right? Each female cohort, get the colonists, can lay up to 2,500 eggs, um, but only a few of their young will survive and return to, the sp to spawn. Cohen salmon use the scent of the river as well as an internal compass that acts like a homing device to find a way home to spawn. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> amazing. Oh my God. Oh, oh, vertigo here. Oh, 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 just look at that drop, look at that drop. So it's saying here in the sign here that ferns existed before people and before the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, right? So that plant there, and we have them at home in Ireland as well, ferns. Um, fog is one reason the trees in our forests have grown so tall. Trees can absorb up to 40% of the water directly from the fog and mist and move that water from the roots all the way to their top. Ferns existed before people and even before dinosaurs, making them one of the oldest and most adaptable species in our rainforests. An ideal spot for ferns to grow is on or near a fallen tree and near a source of moisture such as a creek or river. Ferns grow in almost every habitat on earth with more than 20,000 species of ferns worldwide. So there's more information for you people but you've probably all already knew that. Maybe I'm the one that uh, needed to be further educated. And I keep saying you learn something new every single day. Every day. 
Wow. Here's the life of a salmon. As a, an adult female salmon produces between 2,000 to 5,000 eggs. The number, number of eggs that become fertilised is very high, but the number of eggs that hatch depends on water conditions. Salmon eggs are laid in the fall, allowing the eggs to incubate over the winter. 2. Hatching. Salmon are born in gravel beds and streams far from the ocean. Usually 90% of the eggs hatch under ideal conditions and the entire process takes around about 40 days. Uh, number 3. Infancy. After the eggs ha hatch <coughs> and emerge from the gravel, the, f the fish continue to feed from their yolk sac, gradually absorbing it into their system. Only 10 to 15% of the fish survive this period due to harsh weather and water conditions as well as increases in water pollutants uh, for maturity. At the age of one, juvenile salmon migrate to the sea and remain there until they reach sexual maturity which typically takes three years. Salmon can grow to be up to five feet long, wow, and weighing up to 130 pounds and then returning. Once the salmon have reached maturity, they leave the ocean and return to the exact same river in which they were born so that they can spawn. Due to the difficulty, the difficult journey upriver, salmon adults die after spawning. That's an amazing life for a salmon, isn't it? Amazing. You know, there's just, uh, just walking around here, not stopping at all the places, but there's so much information about the forest, the whole ecosystem of the forest, um, uh, the, uh, you, you just after hearing me read about the salmon there. So, yeah, so if you were to take your time and not only enjoy the forest, but stop and read all of the, of the different information, it's, it's well worth it, you know. Um, to do a good job in explaining things to you for sure. Right, I'm almost out of here my friends, almost out of here.